ladies and gentlemen, and fight fans around the world. This is All Access MMA. My next guest is the newest member of the UFC's flyweight roster, a Canadian. It's great to see some more Canadians in the UFC. He's going to be taking on Amir Abadazi coming up here at UFC Fight Night on July 18th. It is Malcolm Gordon joining me here on the program. Malcolm, how's it going, man? What's up? What's up? Glad to be here. Thanks, James. And once again, for making me on the show. Finally, I know we've been, we've been back and forth trying to get on this. Well, I don't know if you remember this. I, I was supposed to interview you like years ago and it just never worked yeah. out. And then uh, and, and now we're finally here. I'm glad to get you, uh, you know, uh, when you're actually in the UFC. I knew it was only a matter of time. Uh, first off, uh, congratulations. Uh, when did you actually sign pen to paper? Because we're recording this on July 10th. Yeah. So uh, I got the call on Friday. Um, and then uh, it, it, it was basically that was a short notice replacement after the news of uh, Khabib's father passing away, right? And a couple of the fighters on the card had pulled out um, because of the tragedy. Um, so I, yeah, I, got, I originally got the call from my manager, Danny Rubenstein, um, Friday, and by Saturday we put pen to paper and whatnot, you know. And, and you know, I, I was sitting at lunch as soon as I heard about it, we were like, I got up, I called um, my coach, Joe, uh, Joe Vatellini and, and we were back in back of the gym right away. Awesome. Well, I didn't even know you were rep by Danny. How did that come together with you uh, being managed by him by Ruby sports? Uh, he's, a, he's been a, he's been a friend of like, you know, like the team Topkins guys, you know, Oh, uh, Jesse six, Ronson. Seven, okay. That, that makes Jesse sense. Ronson, whichever. Yeah. So I think, I think I was signed before Ronson. I, I might've been the case. Um, but I know Rubin's had a good relationship with uh, Sam and 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 everybody like you know with the, the, the Tompkins guys. So um, you know, just I think just being in the in the loop and whatnot. You know, I, I was originally managed by uh, Brian Butler and, and Sucker Punch, um, but He's yeah, been, but sure. um, yeah, so. Yeah, it all worked out, though. I mean, you're in the UFC. That, that's awesome. And, and so good to see that they're still investing in the flyweight division, too. I think that's awesome that they, they brought you on there. I, I got to know, who's the first person you told? Because this has been a long time coming. I've been, like I said, I've been following your career for a while. First person I told, uh, my dad. <laughs> awesome. What was that conversation like? He must have been so yeah, proud of you. It, it was pretty crazy. Like, he was like, you, like, you did it. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I stayed pretty narrow-minded for the most part, you know what I mean? Like everybody kind of said, you know, like the sport it doesn't it doesn't take you in a in a straight path. It kind of, you know, you have your ups, you have your downs, you have your sideways. So you know, sometimes you know when we have those long layoffs and whatnot, um, you know, you start reevaluating what you're doing with yourself and your career and whatnot. And same thing when you take your injuries or your losses. You know, obviously everybody's excited when they win. So you know. It was. It's been a long time journey, and then there was so much news in the air, and with the the UFC, with the flyweight division, and the uncertainty into like what they're going to do next with it, um, you know. And but I, I, I just had to stay near minded, and just, you know, hopefully that was going to be the best case scenario. You know, my my window was. I was. I I signed to Brave before this. Brave I remember you had the the cards. The fights were canceled. I, I did notice that. And then yeah, and then the fights got canceled due to COVID and whatnot, and then. You know, it was kind of sat on the back burner. And, then, you know, so I was willing to fulfill out that contract. But thankfully, you know, the, well, not thankfully, because I know a lot of people have, are, there's a lot of hardship and whatnot going on right now because of all this COVID. But, you know, with all of that being said, the stars somehow aligned and I'm in the UFC. Yeah, no, really, really happy to see it all worked out. Um, let's talk about that last fight. I know it was a year ago, but that was a huge win back then. Uh, you beat Yoni Shervatov, and people will know that name because he was on The Ultimate Fighter. Um, that yeah. was for TKO. Uh, you know, did, did you feel like at that point big things were ahead? Because that was a pretty – I mean, you've had other notable wins. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, did, did you feel like that was sort of the win where you're like, this has got to be it? Yeah, yeah. I, that, that was kind of the hope. That was, that was definitely the hope after that win. Um, that That was it. You know what I mean? Like – I had Yanni and I were on each other's radar for a long time. I uh, I think the mo- that was probably the most anticipated fight in my entire career so far until like the obviously now the UFC debut. So I had a lot like there was a lot of emotion on that fight. There was a lot of like you know built up you know and and that that fight actually got canceled two times in the making before right. it. I remember right? that. it was it was postponed twice um, on TKO's end. So it. Like we were just like, and he and he looked like unbeatable for like forever. You know what I mean? Because I watched him on Ultimate Fighter. Okay, he he probably had a very rough fight on that time, but you know, just watching the tapes and whatnot of Yami Yami Shurbatov for for so long and just seeing how well he was coming along, and then after all of that, and then just like massacring opponents and and just being like, just you know, I was like, holy smokes, this guy's gonna be like 
you know. So I, I took him very serious, and it was like it was it was a relief to get that off, and, and very thankful that it was it, it ended the way and sh- how shortly it did, and and with the finish because I'm always trying to get the finish, and I think that's the most important thing of the whole Yanni Shervatov fight is that I actually finished this guy. So. Yeah. And, and, and I think, I think the other big thing too, is that, you know, that was a, that was for TKO. So, you know, people are familiar with that promotion. It was something that, that people could watch because that's so important. Cause actually this is what I was going to reference. I was at one of your fights. Uh, you fought in Bellator against Chris Kaladis. You actually defeated him. And I remember yeah. that fight. And that's a fight that I don't think a lot of people give you credit for because it was, it was a while ago, but Chris obviously went to the UFC after that. So, um, one of the things I like about you being in the UFC now is like you're battle tested, man. Like you fought the who's who on the regional scene. So you must feel pretty prepared heading into this debut. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Chris Pilatus was another like great fighter. Once again, another missed opportunity to sign into the UFC after that. But you know, like I think, th- I think it's just like it wasn't really. I think it's it's uh, it's definitely obviously my time now, right? So, you know, it, it took after those few years, you know, a few more tough opponents, and now I, you know I understand myself, my strengths, my weaknesses, um, everything a lot better. Um, so now I'm, it's at that point where it's. You're like you said, I'm a little bit more battle tested, right? So, I, and I've seen it all, so I've seen most of it. Um, so, it's a good, it's a good start to to get into the UFC now, right? So what do you know about your opponent, Amir uh, Abazi? Um, again, a, a guy that's uh, a formidable opponent for sure, but uh, I'm sure you've had some time to assess him as an opponent. How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, he's, um, he's, 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 he's got a lot of, he's, he, well, he took this, note, this fight on even shorter notice than myself, right? Um, that's, that's about it. Like, I think at this point it's like, we're kind of splitting hairs to kind of, you know, cause he deserves there and I also deserve to be there. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, he, and he's, he's, a, he's an awesome grappler. He's got really quick hands. He's got, he's got really, um, good movement and whatnot. So it's going to be an exciting fight to, to, to and, and, um, you know, exciting matchup, I think on both of our skill sets, you know what I mean? We both deserve to be there. So it, it's going to be fun. Um, but like I said, he's taking this on even shorter's notice because I have my original opponent was um, Alexander. Uh, um, I'm gonna butcher his last name, but no, uh, I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, uh, he, right. He and and yeah. so and and so, I think somewhere along the lines in the testing process, either himself or his corner um, had tested positive for COVID, and it's um, so so. Uh, Aziz is, is, is um, or sorry, Amir is uh, is a, a short nose replacement for him. I was a short replacement for the other guys. So, you know, now it's kind of like it's, 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 this is it. You know, two short notice guys taking this fight. It's, it's going to be exciting. You know what I mean? Uh, what type of camp have you had leading into this? Uh, it's pretty like, you know, well, we were in the COVID situation in Canada and, and it's even more, um, it's even more different than like the U S the situation because everything that we had was under lockdown. Right. So we were like, there was no gym openings. If you were training, it was like at your friend's house or your basement or something going on. Um, not a lot of uh, places because of all the strict regulations were able to open and allow um, athletes to come in. Thankfully, towards the end of it, whichever we were able to get into the actual facility and, and get some good training with some good partners. But for the majority of what, you know, we had to do was just try to case, stay consistent on the conditioning end. You know what I mean? Like, I've been doing it for so long that I know how to fight. Um, it's just going to take a few weeks to get sharpened up for, like, say, whatever tactical um, uh, techniques that we want to implement during the fight. But, you know, that, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, I know how to fight. I know, I know, I know who I am as a person, too. So, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's the other thing, too, is, like, when the UFC calls, and I've been waiting for this call for a long time, I wasn't even sure if it was ever going to happen, in all honesty. I had to say yes. There was no, you know, I know it's cliche, but it, it, I wasn't sure I was going to get a second opportunity or whatnot. So I had to say yes. There was no other opportunity. There was no other option but to say yes to this. So, you know, bite down on the mouthpiece and, and get back in the gym and let's just grind it out for the next couple of weeks and, and go kill this guy. And, and it could work out better. I mean, look at another Canadian, Tanner Bozer. He couldn't train with anyone, and he ended up working on his conditioning, and he had the best performance of his career. So you never know, right? Like, and you brought up a good point though, too. Just that, uh, you know, you like you know how to fight, right? Like, it's it's not like you're gonna. It's not there, there's certain things that 
you know, you're, you're already just sort of aware of and, and you're used to just having fought as much as you have. So I think, uh, you know, people questioning the camp, it's like, you know how to fight, right? It's like, yeah, that's, that's the thing. You know, we, we know how to do this. You know what we're going up against. And it's just, and once again, you know what I mean? This guy's taking this on short notice too. So it's kind of a leveling playing field now. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, how much uh, strategy does Joe Valtellini give you? Because obviously he does the commentary for Glory. I know that's kickboxing, but he also does the podcast with Aaron Braun setter every week. Like he's really immersed in MMA. So I think, uh, you know, I'm sure he's a good guy to have in your corner in terms of like, uh, you know, strategy and game plan and all that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I've, I've spent a lot of time just trying to get, um, you know, the, the best coaches that are available. And I think I really lucked out with Joe. Um, Joe, his mindset, his the way he um, articulates the, the techniques and, and the training and organizes and structures the entire camps for me. Um, it's a it's a huge it's a huge value, and I th- I, I really I really uh, appreciate it. But it, it's it's like you know it, it's something very special. You know what I mean? Because it it, it is a full time and it's a it's a hard gig to to take take over. You know what I mean? But it, like him being you know a glory kickboxing champ and, and whatnot he's been in the trenches for those 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 you know he's done that um and he knows what it takes to get to that to, to be a champ too right and and so I, I i value that uh what type of travel schedule are you looking at now like you're in vegas now and for those who don't know like going from ontario to vegas is like what five hours i think around there yeah so we went originally we had a direct flight from ontario to um to uh, sorry on um straight from toronto to Vegas, Vegas, to Abu Dhabi. And then it, it was just like this whole COVID situation has kind of messed things up. We ended up having to do a bouncing around and whatnot. But, um, you know, now we're, it's, we had a 15 hour flight to Dubai and then we just got to get done. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, how about the weight cut? Is, is that going well? And I'm sure you got to alter that a little bit with so much travel, uh, you know, that you're going to yeah, be having. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it's like there's no we got to get it done, whichever. I think the, it's 110 the, degrees in Dubai. We're gonna have no problem cutting. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not gonna have a problem. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. No, I just had to ask, obviously, because because you retain water on the plane. That's why I ask. So yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So it should be it should be good, man. It's, it, we're, we're gonna we'll be we'll be ready. Who's in your corner for this fight? So I got uh, Joe Vatellini and Sam Stout. Oh, awesome. Nice. Yeah, so we got, I got two vets. I, got, I have to keep one of the Team Tompkins guys with me. You know what I mean? We're brothers. We've always been there for one another. So it's, it's important that I have one of them with me. So thankfully, Sam stepped up, and, and he's here with us, with us, too. Very cool. How's the fight playing out on July 18th? Uh, it's going to play out well. I think it's going to be a very exciting fight regardless. You know, I'm not gonna, I, don't, I don't like to overcommit to, like, this is how it's going to go because, like, obviously it never goes to, to plans, right? Um, but one thing, if you, you know, you follow any of my fights, you always know that it starts off fast and it ends fast. So, you know, or it ends, you know, it ends at some point. So, but I think this guy is going to be very, like, I don't know what to expect, man. I, I just, you guys can definitely expect a very exciting fight. That's for sure. Right. I'm always excited for you to watch. Do you feel like the timing of you coming into the UFC is good because the flyweight division's kind of restarting again? It seemed like they were, I mean, they were doing fights, but there's so much uncertainty. And it seems like if you get a couple like notable wins here, you can really move up the rankings pretty fast. Is that something you're kind of aware of, just knowing that how wide open the division appears to be? Yeah, I'm aware of it. But like, once again, I try to take things at like one fight at a time. So, you know, when those opportunities, like, you know, after this fight, if that's the opportunity that's there, that's, that's there. If not, I'm not going to be heard about it. It's, it's just a, it's good to just be here right now. You know what I mean? And at the timing that it is, because I do realize or recognize that this is good timing. So that's it. What are you doing to keep yourself occupied both on the on the flight and then the quarantine and everything? Like, have you mapped that out yet? Have you downloaded a bunch of movies or got some podcasts? What, what do you like doing to... Yeah, well, just, just relax, man. Just relax. And hopefully, I think we're like when we're flying, there's going to be that uh, Usman Masvidal fight. So, like, oh, I'm, perfect. I'm hoping, there you go. I'm hoping that that's going to be like a, like something that we'll be able to watch on the flights. If not, whichever, we can start to try to figure it out. I don't know if it, like this flight's going to have Wi-Fi or something like that. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see. But yeah, I don't... I'm a, a pretty mentally stable guy, so I, I, I'll i just relax. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's even better just to relax, just enjoy the embrace, the, the experience, the moment, and, and being nice and, and calm and quiet, you know? Malcolm, congratulations again, man. It's so awesome to see more Canadians in the UFC. And uh, again, it's well-deserved. Like I said, uh, just, you know, you put in a lot of work on the on the regional scene over the years. So it's great to see you get rewarded for that. Um, it's coming up here July 18th. It is UFC Fight Night. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media you want to plug? The floor is yours, man. 
Yeah, obviously, I want to thank everybody, you know, back home in London, Ontario, Canada, because like, a lot of those, that was like where, you know, it started off for me and everybody that, you know, all of my training partners are back over there. There's so many of them that I'd be here for an hour just listing them all off. Um, Dr. King Fazel Rahman, um, obviously, this fight would have never happened without him, you know what I mean? Like, when the UFC calls, you take the call, but then there was also so many logistics for medicals and pre-fight, all of this stuff. And Faisal was on top of all of this for me and got this done. So this fight would have never happened without King's um, blessing. <laughs> so, um, and then obviously, you know, all my training partners at Bazooka Joe Kickboxing. Um, and, you know, like any sponsor that's ever helped me, because once again, that list is is so long too over the, over the years. But, you know, any of the guys... If you guys are watching that have supported and helped me, I do not forget. I appreciate every one of you guys. I'm so thankful that, you know, without any of your guys' support, I probably would have never gotten to this point. Um, and then obviously last and, and most, like, my, my friends and my, my family, you know what I mean, for that emotional support, you know, when the bad times. And <laughs> I think those are the most important because this sport does give you a lot of bad times. Um, and, and you need that family and that good support system to get you through those. So, you know, my parents... Um, my grandparents, my my close friends, um, I would I'd love to thank all of them too for just you know because like it's it's such a it's a it's a it's a huge team that people forget that gets you here. It's not just the guys that are in the gym, you know what I mean? There's so much more out there, you know. So. Yeah.